There we go. I think we're live. I hope so. Howdy, folks. Uh, I am doing this from Facebook because I feel like it's just the easiest way to set up. I can put my camera on the tripod. I actually had a, I had a smaller tripod for a long time, and it actually fell over off of my, my little uh, rolling desk here that I use for work and for other stuff. And unfortunately, it fell at such an angle. It didn't harm my phone, thankfully, but it did fall at such an angle that it broke the phone holder. So quality, quality craftsmanship there. <laughs> so that, that thing's done, but thankfully I had a, a fallback a fuller size tripod that had a phone holder on there. So hopefully this works out pretty well. But yes, we're doing it from here because I feel like it's probably a little bit easier. I don't have a camera set up on my computer and this is eh, more or less informal, but hopefully I can save this. And uh, if you're seeing this from YouTube later on, hello, howdy. Hope you all are doing pretty well on this Saturday. So for the last couple of months, I have done the, the bulks of subscription box. And I, it, it was something I'd seen for a while. Tobby Eats has uh, advertised it, as well as Paolo from Japan. Basically, I think if, if you're a YouTuber in Japan, you probably have promoted it at some point, unless you're such a you're at such a level where you don't have to, or it's just personally like, you know what, I already have a Patreon going, I don't have to do any of this stuff anyways. I'm just not going to, you know, they probably have nothing against it, but they don't actually have to do it. And also, looking out my window, I'm wondering, is my, my roommates aren't here right now, so if you end up hearing a lot of dogs barking during the course of this, um, that's gonna just, that's just what's gonna happen, you know. I'm also gonna keep looking at my screen, because I see my camera, but it feels like, the setups off. I don't. I don't know what's going on with this. Pardon me. I will be taking drinks of water periodically. Anyways, back to the original point. So I had seen Boksu getting getting advertised by a, a bunch of a uh, bunch of YouTubers, and I mean, there's there's so many different snack boxes these days. But this one seemed kind of interesting, and around, I'd say, Prime Day, or, or, or I think it was just before Prime Day, I ended up seeing, let me see if I can turn on, oh, no, that's just me commenting, I don't need that. I don't know how things are going to show up on here, kind of just fiddling around with this, okay, sorry about the, the finger in the screen, <laughs> but I'd seen that... Uh, proposition to me by Amazon because Amazon allows certain subscriptions and I'd known that these guys had their own website but I wasn't aware of Amazon doing anything like that. People are driving around. You'll hear airplanes too. I guarantee you'll hear it. You hear if you've seen any of my previous videos on YouTube you will hear them a lot because I live in a flight path and it's quite loud and my my phone's microphone seems to love picking that stuff up. Back to the point I was trying to make. So, uh, yes, I knew that Bulksu had their own website, but I wasn't aware that Amazon was doing subscriptions like that, where you could place orders for these different subscription services, whatever might be on, on Amazon as well, as well, and pay from that way, and you don't have to go through the site, you just go through Amazon. So all the payments being handled there, you can track the shipment there. I thought, that'd be kind of neat, and when Prime Day came around at the near, it was like October of 2020, there was like a really steep discount on the first month's box. It was like $32. And then it would go up to the $45 that was uh, being advertised. So I thought, what the hey, I'll try it out. Because I just started working again and it I had the money and I'm like, why not? You know, it'd be kind of nice to have treats. I can't go out uh, super often for obvious reasons. I don't drive and I just don't want to go out most of the time which unfortunately makes it really hard for me to go to the, the Japanese market that I really like to go to here in Las Vegas. So being able to get snacks and anything like that is rather nice. So I ordered the first box, and when you get the first one, it's always the same thing where it's like, here's a kind of a sampling of what you might see throughout the year. And I, I really liked it, so I let the, the subscription keep going. The next month was winter in Hokkaido. I'm looking over because I see the little booklet there. Uh, that one was quite nice too. So I just let it 
I was like, cool, I'll keep going with this. <clears throat> Pardon me, clear my throat. Um, I just ate a little while ago. You ever, you ever eat something and you just get kind of that little phlegmy feeling? It's like you're not sick, obviously, but it's kind of like you eat and afterwards you have to like clear your throat. Too much information probably, sorry about that. So I let the subscription keep going and it was better to keep it on, I thought about kind of moving it over to Boksu themselves but I let it keep running on Amazon because I noticed that Boksu had raised the price from $45 to $50 for the box. I'm like, all right, I'm locked into this price until I want to change it. And December rolls around. Uh, the date rolls around where I'm like, okay, I thought I saw the charge come through and the box is going to get sent to me. And I was like, okay, cool. I'll see the box in a few weeks. Except I get an email from Amazon with them saying, hey, these guys haven't confirmed shipment on this box. So if they don't, then we're going to cancel the order on the 29th of December. I'm like, well, I don't want that. So I get a hold of whatever. I have to go through customer service through Amazon. But since they're like, well, it's a third party deal, we're going to send you here real quick. I sent them an email and I said, hey, Amazon's saying this thing and we need to get it. I don't want the box canceled because I knew that this month's theme was for uh, Kanagawa Prefecture. And I was like, okay, I want this box. You know, I want I want the stuff that's gonna come with this. And it was a couple of back and forths and it sounded like everything was gonna be cool. And then like De uh, December 30th rolls around and Amazon's like, yeah, they never confirmed shipment with this. Even though folks of themselves had said, yeah, we're shipping it, it's fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, Amazon's like, they didn't confirm it with us so we just canceled the, canceled the order. And I'm like, well, shoot, all right, that's fine. Maybe, maybe they already shipped it and we'll figure out how to, I can pay for it. That's whatever. I was kind of bummed out and I thought about getting rid of the, uh, the subscription. So it was like a week after that, because I mean, it hasn't been that long ago anyways. Uh, I get another email from, from Boksu when they're like, oh yeah, we saw what happened. We're really, we're really sorry about that. And at first they're like, well, we'll be able to ship the order. Just place an order on our website. We'll give you a coupon code that'll be able to get you the right pricing and we can ship it out immediately. We want you to get this box. And I'm like, all right, cool. And it was a couple of days because the communication, I think through that type of channel is really slow and I don't hear anything. And then they get back to me this past Thursday, which is the seventh. Cause yeah, today is, today is January 9th as I'm doing this. They get back to me a couple of days ago and they say, oh, well the box did ship you should actually be seeing it right about now. Uh, and don't worry about getting charged for it. Just, you know, here's the box. That way you can have it. You know, thanks thanks for being a customer. If you ever want to swap over here, don't worry about it. If you want to, you know, we'll get you set up. If you want to keep your sub through Amazon, that's fine. You know, just thank you for being, thank you for being uh, a customer and, and, and being a patron. I'm like, all right, cool. So I thankfully got this box. Uh, there's not going to be much in it over here as I grab it because most everything's laid out in front of me right now. But yeah, if you've never seen the bulk zoo, I'm sure you have. But same box for every month. Like when you get your first box, if you ever if you ever subscribe to it, it's always in this orange box and it's just the contents that are in it that are different. But yes, this month's for January is Golden Kanagawa. And I will go through the booklet and try to show you some stuff here as we go through because I kind of have everything laid out in in the order that they show it here in the book but yes Golden Kanagawa and this one's special to me because I've been to Japan twice uh, the first time was about eight days second time was about 21 22 days so I've kind of over the last you know, I didn't get to spend any time there in 2020 for obvious reasons but 2018 and 2019 should have done it with this hand and this hand. I don't know where it's gonna it's gonna put everything when we. I'm also kind of shifted over this way again. It, this setup's a little weird, but uh, for those two trips, a, a lot of my time I haven't been able to fully explore Kanagawa, but when I've gone there, I've stayed with a friend of mine. Like I've traveled with a friend here in the states, and we've stayed with a longtime friend of his and somebody I've known as an acquaintance for for some time now. We stay with with them at their house and they live in a city called Atsuki, which is by train, it's about an hour. If you catch the Rapid Express, you, you can get to Shinjuku in about an hour. 
but it's also like a 20 minute bus ride. He lives in Atsugi, but he lives in Atsugi city, but it's kind of a suburban area. Like it's a planned community area that's a little bit out of the way. But I've been to Yokohama, I've been to Hakone. So Kanagawa was a lot of my first experiences in Japan were in this prefecture. So I thought, perfect, what a great thing to do. And it's also a little bit, kind of a little bit themed to New Year's as well. If you see, you can see kind of the, the Hanabi stuff going on on there, the fireworks and everything. Not that you could do a whole lot for New Year's as well, because 2021 isn't exactly off to the best start, is it? But Kanagawa has some some great memories. Like I was fully, uh, I, I, I hiked through Hakone in 2019, and there is a video with some of the footage from that. And uh, that was, it was in the middle of the summertime, but it was still, it's that's a beautiful, beautiful area. And I think a couple of things from here are from Hakone. There's at least one thing from Yokohama. We'll, we'll see as we go through the booklet, because I kind of just perused it a little bit, but I didn't go through it a lot. Where the hell, and I realize we're doing this live. Where the, there it is. I realize my, my lips are very dry. So I'm gonna duck off camera real quick and and put on some, some lip balm, because I need it, because I'm gonna keep licking my lips and it's gonna be not so good. Should have done this before we went on, huh? But give me a moment. There we go. It's dry in a desert. What can I say? All right. So, yes. So, I've looked through these a little bit. Um, there's information. The, the, these guides are always little bits of information about the area they're coming from, like with the last one being a lot of Hokkaido based stuff, it gives you a little bit of information. It's like, hey, here's a little bit about Hokkaido and here's what goes on in the winter time there. But this month, let's see, this is the Boksu Culture Guide, volume 21, which means they haven't been around a super duper long time. But yes, Golden, Golden Kanagawa. I don't think, I don't remember quite how to read these two characters here. I know that's the character for gold. That can be read as king. I don't know about the second one, and I don't know if that's, if it's particularly pronounced. Because I've seen king, and I've seen ogon. But at least with, you know, it's, you know, golden, however it's read there, and then, then no, and then kanagawa. For the last three characters. Yes, golden kanagawa. Well, let's read along, shall we? Happy New Year! However the start of 2021 finds you, we invite you to join us on this tasty journey to Kanagawa, Japan, with this month's Golden Kanagawa Boksu. From ancient shrines in Kamakura, the bustling port city of Yokohama, and the scenic beauty of Hakone, there is an incredible variety of ways to celebrate in Kanagawa. Traditional New Year's Japanese activities, that's a little backwards there, but I mean, supposed to be traditional Japanese New Year's activities, my apologies for that, include visiting a shrine in the new year, watching the sunrise on New Year's Day, and of course, eating delicious foods. We hope you enjoy this month's box of Kanagawa-made and New Year's-inspired snacks. Yeah, with these, they don't generally stick to just that particular, uh, that particular prefecture. You'll find stuff mostly comes from that prefecture, and then you'll have other stuff that comes from uh, a few others around around the country. Yeah, discover where your snacks are from. Uh, one of the things they show here, the Great Wave, the most recognizable work of Japanese art in the world, an enormous wave is seen threatening three boats off the coast of the Kanagawa Prefecture. Yeah, uh, you might be able to see that. That one right there. That's a, that's a, it's only part of the painting, but it's something that you have definitely probably seen. I have a t-shirt with a, a, a pocket on there that I got from Uniqlo a, a couple of years ago that ends up having that. And yeah, Kanagawa, Japan, the southeastern corner of the Kanto Plain, Kanagawa is mostly known for its hot springs. I have done the hot springs in Kanagawa, it's quite nice. And they also give you a full map of where everything comes from. And for the most part, everything comes from Kanagawa. You got a couple snacks from Tokyo. You have one from Niigata Prefecture, uh, one from Aichi Prefecture, which is to the south, not too far away. I think it's in between, I think that's in between Kanagawa and, oh, it's, no, she, uh, she's woke up. 
is in between uh, Kanagawa and Aichi. And if you're on the Tokaido Shinkansen, if you take that from uh, Tokyo or Yokohama, and you're heading towards uh, Kyoto or Osaka, you'll end up running through most of those places. And one, yeah, one way down in Osaka. They always light up Okinawa down here. It seems like it's it's dark and like, hey, something's coming from Okinawa, but it usually, I haven't had anything yet out of the three boxes I've had. And a message from the founder. Thank you for starting the new year with us at Boksu. This month, we are proud to officially partner with Kanagawa Prefecture to discover and introduce local snack makers from Kanagawa to the world. Many of these makers rely on tourism throughout the world for much of their business. With tourism still down, we made it our mission to support these small businesses and hope you will continue to support them in the future. Someone's got a motorcycle on outside. Actually, it might be the neighbor right across the way from us. It's weird. This street can be really quiet, and other times you just have a bunch of people that have exceptionally loud vehicles. But if you watch some other channels on YouTube, you'll know they have very loud neighborhoods too, and they just kind of have to work with it. Okay. So our first snack is going to be this guy right here. This is, uh, looks like an exclusive. It says classic exclusive, so it may be exclusive to this box in terms of how you can get it other than actually going and uh, purchasing it directly from whoever makes it or wherever you might be able to purchase it in Japan. But this is the Yokohama Sesame Oil Okaki Rice Crackers made by Iwai no Goma Abura uh, as a crossover with Minoya Arare, which that first one, uh, that first one looks like it would be a maker of uh, sesame oil, and the second one would be a rice cracker company. This one, these rice crackers don't play around when it comes to sesame. Each crunchy cracker is coated with both soy sauce and uh, specially brewed by Min Minoya Arare and Iwai no Goma Abura's specialty sesame oil that ha has just a hint of heat from the added chilies. And the nice part about any of these is they give you a flavor profile. You see down there, leave that up, because I remember, can't remember everything on that. Um, they give you a flavor profile, which is usually savory or sweet. They give you uh, information if it's vegetarian or not, and kind of kind of depends upon what you might be running into here. It'll give you common allergens, which you'll find into a, a, a lot of these things, usually either wheat, soy, fish, stuff like that. And then anything additional. And this one is just N.A. But uh, it's nice that they at least give you that because if you end up not being able to eat it, there's no way to swap out snacks as far as I know. So you just kind of have to be like, okay, hopefully some of this stuff, you can take a look at any of the snacks in there. But uh, basically, if, if I would say if you ever wanted to get one of these boxes, specifically this one, you might want to take a look at what most of their snacks contain. I don't have any food allergies to to my knowledge. I, I'm very lucky on that part. So basically any of this stuff I can I can eat and I don't I don't really end up having any problems. All right, second snack, also exclusive to uh, this box, I believe, is a golden financier cake made by Nakajima Taisholdo. Financier is a classic French cake made with almond flour and usually baked in a small mold and flavored with... I, my French is horrible, so I'm, gonna, I'm going to just mess this up completely. Bionocet. But I could have just said, it's made with brown butter. <laughs> Let me lower it a little bit. I'm trying to angle it to where I'm not getting a lot of glare. This beautiful cake opens with a light, moist texture and finishes with a smooth, buttery taste. And it's obviously going to be sweet. Uh, it, is, it is vegetarian. Uh, it doesn't contain any super duper weird things. But there are a lot of allergens in here. Milk, eggs, tree nuts, and wheat, which makes sense. It's a cake. It's got, <laughs> it's got almond flour in it. Can't make that without almonds. All right. Third item, made by J.A. Kanagawa Seisho, is the Shonan Gold Gummy or Shonan Gold Gumi. Shonan Gold is a unique citrus fruit from Kanagawa Prefecture known for its bright golden color and sweet, juicy flavor. These chewy gummy candies feature a juicy jelly center for superior flavor. I am on board with that. These are not vegetarian. And the ingredients list obviously is, some of these are, are like prepackaged, like 
with some of this stuff like the, the the financier cake this seems like it would be a part of a box of multiple cakes and they just end up putting in the individual ones in there whereas stuff like this is in retail packaging so you at the very least if you're like me and you you uh end up tracking what you're eating you can end up <laughs> putting in uh all your correct information since there's a upc code to do on that not that there's a whole lot of calories there's going to be more sugar in this than, than anything else yeah that one's not vegetarian so i'm wondering what they use for uh the jelly but look on here it never wants to tell me who's on as i put my finger into the screen yet again not seeing any comments come through, so I'm not even sure how that's supposed to show up here. I, th I think this is the first time I've done, I thought it was supposed to show up on screen, but I haven't streamed from Facebook, honestly, in about a billion years, it feels like. All right, up next, from Sanyo Busan, is a Yokohama caramel ring cake. This ring cake is soaked in a caramel sauce, which keeps it soft and sweet. To really amp up the caramel flavor, Caramel paste and caramel powder are used in the batter. Piss. <laughs> Whenever that's going to show up on the video. Welcome in, dude. Um, this one I'm probably going to have to eat soon. It's it's got a it's got a desiccant pack in there, so I don't think it's going to go bad. And most of this stuff should be fine. There's an, especially in that there should be more than enough sugar in it to be able to stave off like anything. It is vegetarian though. I don't know why I keep, I think it's just more kind of, I guess, just for informational purposes. Milk, eggs, wheat, and soy is allergens. Clearly it's sweet with the amount of caramel. And it shows, I love the picture, shows it being dipped in like a caramel sauce. I'm like, I don't know if I want that much caramel. Maybe I do. I don't know. Okay, next one is the Yokohama Bashamichi Milflu. Milflu. Usually I can see that written in Japanese and get more of an idea of how that's going to be pronounced. But it's a lemon flavor made by Gâteau de Voyage. Uh, so there it is. Little milflu, little layers. Basamichi is a famous Yokohama street known for its heavy Western influsion, influsion, influsion? influence as one of the first international Japanese ports. This Western style confection has layers of flaky pastry and a creamy lemon filling. It is vegetarian as well. All right. Next up, it's a lot of sweets in this one, but they, they kind of, I feel like they, they kind of go more on the sweet side with uh, the last couple of boxes. This one, this one I'm trying to remember if I actually saw it when I was, was in Hakone in 2019. Because when you get to, I think it was Hakone Yumoto Station, uh, which is where we got off, me and my friends, before we went hiking up there. There's a there's a bunch of gift shops where you can just buy you know a bunch of omiyage and pick some stuff up. But this one is the Hakone, the Hakone no Kirikabu, is a chocolate leaf pie made by Nagatoya. This cute and tasty treat is a popular miyagegashi or souvenir sack. Yeah, omiyage is the souvenir, the word for souvenir. Uh, yeah, this is a popular, uh, popular miyagegashi from Hakone. The unique shape of the pie reminds us of the snow-covered leaves with its sugar-frosted flaky pie dough, and inside is a rich and sweet layer of chocolate. That should be nice. And thankfully, most of this stuff uh, pairs well with tea, really, really well, and there's a reason behind that. What is my watch? Oh, it is. Yeah, I'm just going to have to miss my stand-up for this hour. Or move around more, so it actually ends up uh, reading it as me standing up. Next up, to make sure I check my... Yeah. So this one, interesting little package. This is a puree gummy petite lemon flavor for, uh, made by Kanro. These sweethearts start off with a sour punch. Sure, it might feel like you just bit into a lemon, but don't let those first sour moments scare you away, since the flavor mellows into a lovely and sweet lemonade taste. This seems interesting. There's a lot of air in that, too. Like, it seems like it's solid. I don't know how many 
there might be only like one thing in there, but it's like there's a ton of a ton of air. Not sure why, unless it's just to protect the gummy, but it's a gummy. Like, it's not going to explode. All right. Next up is from Bourbon. Um, we have not... No, we have not seen anything from Bourbon. And Bourbon is a well-known brand over there for sweets. And this one... I actually have multiples of these. Uh, a couple of these I actually thankfully have multiples, which is nice. I love when they... The, some of the smaller items, they give you like two or three or maybe sometimes four but this one is a mini baked cheesecake made by bourbon we could who could say no to bite-sized cheesecake not us this delightful cake has a layer of creamy cheese made with rich camembert between two fluffy cheesecake layers and is rich moist and everything cheesecake should be it's a little teeny bite but this, like, along with the, the choco pie or something like that, you have a couple of these little things with, with some tea. That is perfect. Next up, this looks like another one, because actually the... Uh... Oh, wow, yeah. This is... I'll probably put this down for a second just to show off the, the rest of the packaging. But this is also another one where it's a, it's a well-known brand, because I've seen these before. I've actually had uh, cookies from this brand. This is the no Noir Black Choco Stick. Kagabo, uh, Kagabo Hojicha, and Hojicha is uh, roasted green tea, if I remember correctly, made by Yamazaki Biscuits, or YBC. Have you heard of Kagabo Hojicha? It's a special type of roasted green tea, uh, green, green, get some green, some green tea and some corn. Roasted green tea from the Kaga region of Japan, made with the stems, not the leaves, of the tea plant. Hmm. It gives the chocolate filling of these rich biscuits a nutty aroma that makes them utterly delicious. And let me put this down somewhere around here. There we go. Um, so you can see the box, but you can also see that it, there's a little flap there and it opens up and let's see what's going on on the back here. So you can take the biscuits out. Oh, so, that's funny. All right, let me see if I can actually sh show that a little bit clearer. Um, since my camera doesn't have great zoom on it because I cheaped out and got the wrong fucking iPhone the last time. So you can take everything out. You can actually set this up to where you can, there's little openings and you can put the, the biscuits, the package of biscuits there so you can have them off to the side. And then the bigger opening, you can, you can set your phone so that way you can still work with your phone and, and eat your snack. Sure. It's, that's goofy, but you know what? I like that. I like things like that. All right, moving on. We have a couple more snacks to go through. This is the, the bigger bag and it's also filled with air because it's potato chips. Last, uh, last month they had a uh, rich butter potato chip that was amazing. It tasted like tasted like good mashed potatoes just made with butter. This is made by Calbee, which is another very well-known brand. This is the Kataage Potato Savory Garlic. Garlic lovers rejoice. These crunchy chips are for you. Kataage is a line of Calbee potato chips known for their extra crunchy texture. For a truly garlicky flavor, these chips are seasoned with garlic powder and fried garlic powder. This this is going to be um, strong, I guarantee it. What did I have recently that had a, had garlic in it that was like ridiculously strong, but yeah, fried garlic powder, that means there's gonna be a lot going on. Although one of these, what is this here? Hey. Okay. They show a bag down here. Oh, maybe it's something that was different, like this is the new design because they, it looks like they already had this. Can you see that? Oh, there we go. I'm crossing my eyes trying to look stuff. That's going to look really good on camera, huh? But the old bag there, they just had a, a tall beer. Is that an Asahi beer? No, I don't think it is. I think it's just a, a random beer glass that probably has a, a Calbee logo on it. These sound pretty good. This next one I was looking at uh, a little bit ago, and it says it's sweet. But honestly, it seems like it's more of a, um, a savory item. 
That's this guy here. You had another little small snack. This is a salty butter and camembert cheese cookie made by Takara Seika. While still on the sweet side, this sandwich cookie has a sharp flavor from the camembert filling and the salted butter used in the cookie that add a refreshing savoriness. This seems pretty interesting. The chips are obviously, well, it says they're vegetarian, but you know you probably would, I think these days most chips probably would be based on the oil that they cook things in. Yeah, everything, almost everything so far, except for the gummies, has been vegetarian. So they must be using some kind of animal uh, gelatin for those. Which is weird, because when you get into Asian countries, you can have regular gelatin, but they usually sometimes use uh, agar agar for jellies. But I think that might be avoided unless you're specifically making something that is vegetarian. Because the texture between gelatin and agar agar is very different. Uh, oh, yes. Next one. This one was from... Actually, let me go back to the list. So, the... Uh, the... This guy? The pie, obviously. This guy here. The, uh, the camembert, uh, cookie. The, the, the one we just looked at. The... Milflu cake, the <laughs> the ring cake. Uh, we already did the gummies as well as the these guys are all from Kanagawa Prefecture. Uh, the next one we're going to look at is going to be from Aichi Prefecture. This one was from uh, Osaka. The which one is that? Ah. The bourbon is from uh, Niigata Prefecture, although the packaging is different. These are different from what's actually shown in the book. And the noir cookies, the puree gummy, and uh, the chips are all from Tokyo Prefecture. I probably should have mentioned that earlier, but that's fine. <laughs> Why not? Okay, next one up. This is the one from uh, Aichi Prefecture. These guys right here. These are potato snack curry flavor made by Katose Cup. Not quite a chip, these crackers are potato-based, which we think makes them the perfect courier for their spicy and aromatic curry seasoning. After all, potatoes are an essential ingredient in Japanese curry. Yes, they are. These are not vegetarian, but then again, most curries generally are not vegetarian. Yeah, it's they're made out of potato. They do feel round, though, so they almost feel like they're senbei, but not quite. All right, and the final, the final item is going to be this guy right here. Said there was going to be tea. There's, the last item is tea. This is Ashigara Green Tea Aranami Kurofuji, made by Kanagawa Ken No Kyo Chagyo Center. Which is probably a, a tea center? I don't know. This green tea comes from the Ashigara district of Hakone. The plants grow slowly and with less sunshine than other tea types, producing fewer tannins and resulting in a sweeter tea. When picked, ashigata tea is also lightly steamed in a process called asamushi that produces a light-colored aromatic tea. And thankfully they give, uh, there's, I mean, there's, there's always stuff on the back for making your tea, but at the same time, it's usually in Japanese, but they give you the brewery instru instructions here. Steep the tea bag in 200 mils or seven ounces of hot water for 40 seconds or to taste. That is a very short steeping time. That's quite short. Usually for green teas, you're looking at like 90 seconds. That's less than half for this guy. Ooh, that's a pretty. That is not the view I had though in Japanese summertime. Exploring Kanagawa. Discover Hakone. This year we are putting the spotlight on Hakone. Hakone is a small city in Kanagawa prefecture that sits within the Fuji Hakone Izu National Park. Despite its rural location, perhaps because of it, Hakone be has become a popular tourist destination for Tokyoites looking to escape the city for a day. Let's explore all there is to do in beautiful Hakone. Hakone is, I'm gonna take a drink of water here real quick. Mm. Hakone is beautiful. It is exceptionally lovely. Unfortunately, I think I was probably around, this might be the lake area that's shown within this photo. The problem, the problem with visiting in summertime, though, 
is the humidity causes it to be hazy. I think that's the cause. So you can't see shit. Like, if you're on the Tokaido Shinkansen going towards uh, the Kansai region and coming back through it and coming back towards, uh, you know, Kanagawa, like Odawara or um, Yokohama going towards Tokyo, you should be able to see Fuji along the way, except you can't. But if you do it, if you do that same trip during the winter when it's a little bit drier, you can get really clear views unless it's just cloudy that day. So, unfortunately, I've never seen Mount Fuji. Ah, yes. I have not taken this car, but it is heavily, heavily uh, advertised. Because the ODQ, the ODQ line runs through, uh, at least the one I take is the line running through Odawara and in Shinjuku. It's a straight, straight shot either way. Um, I want to say it's probably like a total of 90 minutes from Odawara to Shinjuku as long as you're on that fast train. But yeah, the romance car, uh, Odeq romance car. Why do they put emphasis on the rule? You have to get to Hakone somehow, so why not travel in style? The romance car is Odeq Electric Railways Express Luxury Tourist Service. It takes travelers from Shinjuku in Tokyo to a variety of destinations in Kanagawa, including Hakone. When this train first began its service in 1957, it broke the world speed record for a train of its kind and became the impetus to create the first Shinkansen bullet train. Yeah, it's it's kind of a halfway point because it, it requires a, a different, either it requires a ticket or you just are gonna pay the price. I, I, I have a feeling it's it's, uh, it's a ticket uh, a ticket system for that. And it also ends up showing up on Google Maps like constantly where they're like, oh, you wanna go from here to here? Take the romance car, and I'm like, no, that's another, like, 20, 30 bucks I don't need to spend. But it is one of those things that, it, the trains look really cool, and they look super duper comfortable. It's like a halfway between getting to the Shinkansen level, and it's better than the commuter trains, but the commuter trains are already pretty, pretty decent, depending upon the line you're on. But it's, it's better than saying, oh, yeah, I want to take the commuter train the whole way. You can do it, it's cheaper. And after a certain point, you're not going to run into too many people. The next photo up here, uh, when I went hiking with my friends, if you can see the top one there, we kept calling them pirate ships, but we got, uh, one of them is from the Netherlands, and she's like, that looks more like a, a, a trading ship than a pirate ship, but they call them a pirate ship here. But and if you're on the lake area, yeah, actually, um, if you see the, the Tori Gate right there, I've been to that one because you can see that there's and there's usually you can't really see it from here but there's usually a line uh like up the stairs going towards uh the shrines that are there that people just want to be able to go in front of the Tori gate and get a photo so you could, you're right in front of the gate and you're looking out into the lake picturesque picturesque sights hakone is famous for its gorgeous views of mount fuji one option for a great view is the Hakone Ropeway, which traverses four kilometers and is one of the longest ropeways in the world. I didn't quite say that right, but you got the point. It gives a panoramic view of Fuji, Lake Asi, uh, make Lake Ashi, Asi, and the surrounding forests. If heights aren't your thing, head to Lake Ashi for the Hakone pirate ships, which offer cruises from three ports in the lake. There you'll see the stunning view of Fuji above the trees, and when leaving, from the Moto Hakone port, you can see the bright red Torio Hakone shrine on the water's edge. Aside from Fuji, travelers also frequent the uh, Sengokuhara Pampas grass. I don't know what that is. I didn't see that. And take the romance car. I will next. I, I want to. If I feel like I'm going to, if I'm going to be in like Tokyo for a couple of days and then I'm like, oh, I want to go check out. Odawara, I want to stay there for a couple of days and find like cheap accommodations. Just take the romance car and it's such a short trip though. It feels like it's not worth it. Cause I mean, Odeki only runs uh, so many, so many spots. It is starting to get grainy on that video. Give me a second. I need to turn on a light because the light's starting to die outside. There we go. Let's see my shirt. Granted the front camera on iPhones is uh, grainy. All right. Yeah, let's see. The Sengoku Hara Pampas Grass. <laughs> Pampas Grass. That sounds bad, doesn't it? 
This beautiful view of grasses is worth a visit any time of year, though autumn is most popular as the grasses turn silvery gold. That sounds wonderful. Wow. In the spring, the annual, annual yamayaki, or mountain-burning ritual, engulfs the field in flames to preserve the field. That would be interesting to see. Yeah, the view of Fuji's peak above Lake Ashi is considered a symbol of Hakone. Oh, yeah, there's museums. There's a couple of things. <laughs> there's a lot of stuff I didn't get to do um, during my time there. That looks pretty, though. Wow. It looks like stained glass. Maybe it is. Let's see. The corridor of light sets the garden aglow in a rainbow of colors. So, museums. Hakone is home to two popular art museums. The Hakone Museum of Art was founded in 1952 and focuses on Japanese ceramics from prehistoric times to the Edo period, which is comprised of 1600 to 1868 Common Era. It also features an outdoor moss garden and tea house where guests can enjoy a peaceful repose. Many travelers also seek out the Hakone Venetian Glass Museum, which has a permanent collection of Venetian glass artworks outside and a stunning glassed forest, uh, glassed forest outside. Oh, the glass artworks are inside, and the glass forest is outside. The European-style garden has trees and flowers of glass and a glass archway called, called the Corridor of Light that sets the garden aglow in a rainbow of colors. And for food and drink... There are countless places to recommend for your daily meals in Hakone, but you won't find anything quite like these two specialties elsewhere. Head to Okawa uh, Owakudani Hot Springs to try the Owakudani Black Eggs. Those guys seen in the hand there. These eggs are boiled in the hot springs and the sulfur turns the shells charcoal black. They say that eating just one egg can add seven, seven years to your life. I don't know if I want to add a lot of years to my life, but I will. I mean, that's the bad part. I've never been in, in a, a full-blown, like, hot springs area. And the, the, the thing I always hear is it, it smells like a fart. It is a, it's a strong, it's, I don't know, maybe it's not a super duper strong sulfur smell, but you're, you're within volcanic areas, so it's going to be sulfury. And it's like, well, does it make the eggs taste stronger, smell stronger? I don't care. I like eggs. So yeah, eating one can, is said to add seven years to your life. Then you can take a short break from your travels to the Amazaki Chaya, a historic tea house founded 400 years ago. Their Amazake sweet rice wine has been made from the same recipe since its founding and creates a beverage that has a gentle sweetness with no sugar or alcohol. Yeah, Amazake, I think, I thought might be kind of an a byproduct of uh, sake making, but I think it's just something that's a bit similar, but it's something that you can enjoy cold or hot. I know they, they serve it in like cans and stuff like that during the winter time and it's warm, but I've never got the, never got the chance to try it. And then on the back, there's nothing else there. That's the end of the booklet. They usually give you a, a hint at what next month will be. It's a haiku hint, cold hands and warm hearts beating doki doki when our boksu arrives. I don't know what that means because the last one, when I read it again, like clearly says something about New Year's and Kanagawa. Anyways, so let me take a look because I'll open up the box here because I have a few, I have a few extras for stuff, like for the, uh, the curry ones and the lemon cake. So I have one more tea. I have two more bags of the curry flavored potato snacks. I have two more camembert cheese and salted butter cookies. Two more cheesecakes. One more of the puree lemon gummies. Yeah, and, and one more of these. So those will be the things I can try out real quick. And I can take pictures elsewhere because the other ones I'm, gonna, I'm going to enjoy and put pictures up on my Instagram, which if you haven't followed me on Instagram, instagram.com slash ancientflounder, you can go ahead and go there. But everything else can go back into the box, and I will enjoy them. I don't think I'm going to try everything out. I'll try a couple of these, and then take pictures later. So I think I'll do... And most of these aren't going to be... That, this fuck, this Calbee bag eats up a lot of space, and I completely forgot. So I got the potato snack. Let's do the potato snack. 
one of the salty cookies and one of the cheesecakes. I think that'll be fun. I am looking forward to these though because I love sesame oil. It is terrific. Put that back in there. A big old bag. I can't even, I can't fit everything back in here anymore. I opened up this box and I went, oh my God, there's a lot of stuff in here. Uh, and I'll save the tea for, you know what? Yeah, I'll save the tea for later. So I might have that. I might have like one more snack later on my own and um, make the tea with it. 40 seconds to steep this. That's, is that even what it says on the back? Yeah, 40 seconds. 200 cc's, 40 seconds. So you just dunk it. Huh, it's a really short steep time. Okay, let's uh, let's try the salty butter and camembert cheese cookie. This on the back, salty butter cookie with camembert cheese flavored cream. All right. Well, I could have just torn. I I pulled it apart like I normally would. You, most of the stuff you can just tear really easily. It's no biggie. Wow, that is a strong cheese flavor. Not a bad. It's like one of those, it's, think of when you open up like a bag of like Ritz Bits crackers, similar to that, but not like as sharp, but that clear like cheese scent. Oh, that's a, there's a lot of butter in that. It's like glistening. You can feel it. It almost looks like a macaron except it's not like completely covered. All right, here we go, let's try it out. Mm. Yeah, wow, that's good. And the cheese is kind of the, the savory accent there, but I feel like that you have salty butter but the cookie's kind of sweet. So it just enhances that, and then you get a little bit of enhancement of the cheese. Mm. It's getting crumbs everywhere. It's good. It's fine. I can clean up this area pretty easily. Mmm. Mm hmm. Crispy's nice. And crispy is nice and cookie, yes. Cookie is nice and crispy, not too dense, very easy to, to get through. I would even say it's not even, it's, I mean, it, because it's crispy, a little crunchy, it's a little bit drier than, uh, as you probably would expect. But it's not a dry cookie per se because of the, the butter content that's in there. And that's pretty good. Okay. So, go for the potato snack. My cop told me. Putty, putty, pull. There's three of them in here. Curry style flavor. Gonna make sure to keep this packaging and put it on my totals. What are they? Uh, look like it's only 62 calories. I'm okay with that. Okay. Tear open this side. Yeah, because you can. Do the normal thing there, but if you do that, Japanese packaging usually will not give you any shit. They'll let you, they'll let you open it up pretty easily. Hmm. Yep. Smells like potato. It smells like curry. It smells a little. It smells a little sweet too. And they do kind of look like senbei, but they kind of look like senbei, but they also kind of look like cheese crisps in a way. This one broke off. I think the pieces might be in there somewhere. Okay, let's give this a shot. Mmm. Mmm. That is light. I don't even hear that as you bite into it. That is exceptionally light. Mm, that's good curry flavor though. Not too strong. It could be, could stand to be a little bit stronger, 
but I love that texture, man. That is good. I'm going to save the other two of these. There's two more in there. And I just got uh, <laughs> curry hands. All right. Last thing we'll try here is the bourbon mini baked cheesecake, because I am curious about this. And that one, that one flat out just says, open. I'm going to take a drink, though, again. Look at that curry flavor. And that curry flavor out of my mouth. Okay. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. Not very big. That's a little, little, little niblet of pure heaven because that is moist. You can see how moist that is. You can feel it. A little, a little dense, but not too dense. Got a little heft to it. All right. Oh, that looks good. All right, let's try it out. Mm. It's a little bit... Ooh. There's a... There's a texture difference between the cake and the the middle filling there. Because when you hit the middle, you actually have to kind of break it off a teeny bit. And it's not quite like standard cheesecake. Like it's it's definitely been it's obviously been baked a little a lot more. It usually you won't have that. And like cheesecake over here generally isn't usually baked. Mm. It says baked cheesecake anyways. Mm. Mm hmm. Yeah, you know, the cake itself is not super sweet, but the the middle part is. So it kind of you get a little hits of bright sweetness here and there. Nice and soft though. This is this this is a tea snack for sure. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That is quite nice. All right, um, all right. So we finished those off. We went over all the all the other snacks. That is pretty much everything I wanted to go over today. Uh, I will end up taking pictures and going over these snacks, all the stuff. Like I'm, I, I'm gonna have a, a, my own po bleh, another post over on my Instagram page as I start to go through this box and take pictures of it and give my my thoughts. So the ones that I've tried out already. I'll be giving thoughts on those as well, but uh, yeah, those all three, all three of those are really good. I'm very happy with that, so I'm looking forward to uh, the rest of this box as well. I think it's going to be quite good. So yeah, be on the lookout for those. Those Instagram posts, of course, will show over here on the AF channel page here on Facebook. So that won't be uh, that. Hopefully, you won't be able to miss those there. And for those of you that are going to be watching this later when I archive it over on YouTube, yeah, head over to Facebook.com slash uh, AF channel 83 that is where <laughs> that's that's my Facebook presence you can check me out on Instagram over I'm over on Twitter as well all the stuff's going to be listed there and it's usually listed down below in the description box uh, for YouTube that's where I like to keep all that stuff but that is going to be it for me I will probably be on a little bit later on my regular stream over on Twitch we'll see if not tonight then hopefully uh, sometime tomorrow but for those of you that are watching now, for those of you that are going to be watching later on, thank you for popping by. I really appreciate it. Hope you guys had a little bit of fun today. Enjoy the rest of your Saturday. I really appreciate you guys popping by wherever you might be and wherever you're going to be seeing this at. And hopefully we will see you all again soon. So until then, thank you again. We'll see you all later. Take it easy. Now I got to press the finish button to end the thing. Oh, no.